Hello everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com and we're continuing the video on crosstabs. In the first part where I gave you a gentle introduction to crosstabs, we introduced the idea of what crosstabs is used for. Just to recap, it's used to test whether there is an association or relationship between two qualitative variables and then we looked at an example of smoking and lung cancer. In that video I said that one of the common things I see students doing, a mistake that students make, is to report that because the p-value is really small that there is a strong relationship between say smoking and lung cancer. And I pointed out that is not correct because the lower the p-value just tells us that the it's a strong evidence of relationship against the null. And then I said that in SPSS there are options to measure the strength of relationship if that's what we want to do. Indeed it's a good idea and that's what we're going do to do, it. that's the theme of this here video. So the strength of relationship. Now the strength of relationship depends on whether the measure we use depends on whether our variables are nominal or ordinal or a mix of both. And here I've just got a lecture slide, boring old lecture slide. If the nominal measures of the association if oh yeah if we use a nominal measure of association, those that measure takes the value between zero and one, with zero meaning that there's no association, and closer it is to one, that means the stronger the association. For ordinal measures the association is on a scale to minus to plus one, with minus one meaning a very, very perfect negative association. And the closer it is to plus one, that means the stronger the positive association. Now, if it's in between the two extreme values, zero to one for the nominal case, or minus one to plus one in the ordinal case, well, how do we know how strong it is or not strong? It well, it really depends on the field of application, whether it's like psychology or engineering or, or biological sciences. Uh, so this is where you look at the journal papers and see what your peers have kind of reported in those papers uh, and compare your values with what they've got and then on the base of that say whether it's moderate, medium, uh, strong or weak. But generally, uh, can we say it's a rule of thumb? Well, sometimes you can say if they're less than point two, that so there's no association between 0.2 and 0.6 there's weak, 0.6 and 0 to 0.8 is moderate, 0.8 to 1 is strong. But this is only like a guideline, again I said it differs from field to field of application. Right, so in SPSS it gives us a whole load of choices for the measure. So if we go back to the data here, recall that to do cross tabs go analyze descriptive stats, cross tabs, and then we put in the two attributes, then we go to statistics. Now under statistics, we click on chi-square to get the chi-square test, but then look underneath there is a, a box nominal and there's a box ordinal. Now each one of those, there are a whole load of check boxes we can check, and each of those basically are giving us options on calculating the strength of relationship between our two qualitative variables. So here is a table, here is a table to guide you on what to use. Now some lecturers prefer to use one rather than the other one because there's so many choices if they're right or wrong. So sometimes no. But let's have a look. So if we do look nominal you can use this P of phi, it's a Greek word, Greek letter. Um, if we're dealing with both nominal or one is nominal and one is ordinal. And this only works if you've got a two by two table meaning that one attribute has two categories, like smoking has two categories because it's smoking or non-smoking, or gender, male or female. Kramer's V as a phi, but it's for asymmetric tables, meaning that if your tables are not uh, square, i.e. two by two, three by three, four by four, I, those two numbers do not uh, match. Okay, so an example of an asymmetric one is maybe um, two by three. Lambda, this is for nominal only, symmetric and or asymmetric tables, fine. Contingency coefficients for nominal 
its minimum and maximum values depending on the size of the table. Okay. Ordinal, right, if we've got ordinal gamma, we can apply it when both are ordinal, one is ordinal and nominal, so long as the nominal has more than two levels, they say, so um, in that case, a mix of, n I'll just note that if there's a mix of nominal and ordinal, if we're using the third case where we've got one is nominal, one is ordinal, then the sign is not meaningful, so the sign here, not meaningful, so we just look at the in that case, we just look at the magnitude. All right. If we go back to our example, smoking and uh, what's it? Smoking and uh, lung cancer. Let's do contingency coefficient because that's nominal. We could also do phi because they're both nominal. Okay. So we could either use phi. We could use lambda as well could use contingency coefficient, you see, so that's what I'm saying, there is no right or wrong, it could sometimes depend on preference, so we could here, here use phi, we could use lambda, we could use contingency coefficient, we don't use Kramer's V here because it's for asymmetric tables, we've got a square table, we've got a 2 by 2. Now let's just do contingency coefficient. Now, analyze. Analyze. Descriptive stats cross tabs. Uh, check all those boxes like I did before. And under here, we go for contingency coefficient and say OK. Remember, the contingency coefficient is on a scale from 0 to around 1, but not necessarily equal to 1. So the chi square test tells us we reject the null. So there is a relationship. How strong is that relationship? Let's look down here symmetric to where it says symmetric measures contingency coefficient has a value of 0.615 right so on a scale from 0 to 1 that's over half isn't it so that's going to quite moderate to strong there and is it significant yes okay so that is a figure we would report so they come to this this chi square tells us there's a evidence strong evidence of a relationship and this um, measure here the contingency coefficient tells us that there's say there's moderate Moderately, stro moderately strong association between lung cancer and uh, smoking, which is uh, significant, this value, significantly different from zero. All right, so that's uh, to show you some measures of strength of relationship using cross tabs. So I hope this has been useful. Have a go. Okay, all for now.